Look at this, we got some decorations in the house. Uh, yeah, and a nice new futon couch too. That folds out into a queen size bed actually, decorating in the guest room. I'm really proud of this one though. Uh, it's a little <laughs> obnoxiously large, but really proud of uh, you know having these memorabilia from qualifying for uh, two US Olympic trials marathons. Of course, my Team USA singlet there, Houston and New York City there, Olympic trials qualifier, and this new print, any service, any distance, uh, you could actually, you could get that yourself on our Teespring. Check it out in the link below. Hey everyone, higher running coach and Hoka athlete Sage Candy here with another Training Talk Tuesday. I believe this is episode number 38. Thank you so much for submitting uh, your questions. Top voted one we're going to answer in this Training Talk. Here it is. How long of a training period would you recommend for a first time ultra? I do 16 week blocks for marathons. Would a 50k require a longer training block aside from greater mileage volume? Thanks for your insight. So great question there. Uh, talking about moving up to a 50K Ultra. Now, the first thing I'd say in answering this question is it depends on your experience level, right? Uh, th this runner sounds like she's done several marathon training blocks, uh, pretty serious training plan, 16 weeks to train for uh, probably a 42K road marathon, right? 26.2 miles. And if you've done two or three regular road marathons and had that kind of experience, that's gonna help you transition up to 50K a lot easier than someone who say has maybe only run a half marathon or a 10K uh, and hasn't done a formal 16 week type of training plan. Now, full disclaimer, coaching plug or training plan plug, higherrunning.com, most of our training plans are about 16 weeks for the marathons as well as for the ultra marathons but they're at different levels and it does depend on what level you're at. So uh, like I said, you know, if you have that experience and you're coming off a pretty high mileage base of racing several marathons a year and you've done that for years, you're pretty experienced in the distance running realm and jumping up to 50K is probably not gonna be too much more extreme. There are differences with fueling and some long runs, time on feet, and it will come down to the type of 50K you're doing, more on that later, uh, but you know, generally, if you're an experienced marathon runner and you've done these 16 week blocks, you could definitely extend that endurance, so to speak, uh, for an ultra marathon like a 50K, especially if it's, it's pretty runnable and it's closer to a road marathon. It's not you know, that much more extreme in distance. Now, if it was 100K or 160K, 100 miles, that might be a little bit different. If it's a course that has a lot of climbing, really technical trails, adverse weather conditions at altitude, something like that, more on that later, uh, we'll talk about the training differences and maybe extending that timeline of 16 weeks. But you know, if you're experienced, you don't need as much time because you already have that base. Now, it also depends on what you've been doing in the last six months leading into this ultra marathon. And some people are thinking of their season or their year in terms of you know, not just 16 week blocks or several months, six week, six month blocks, but a full calendar year or maybe two full calendar years. When I ran marathons professionally on the road, it was three marathons every two years on a two year cycle. We're thinking that far ahead in advance. They're like, okay, you're doing Boston in a year and a half. Um, stuff like that because you're planning out your races and you know, it's hard to get into lotteries or arrange travel maybe for a special event you do have to think maybe years in advance, but what you do in those months leading up to your race, be it you know a um, half marathon and then a marathon or a marathon and then an ultra marathon matters. Because if you have a consistent training uh, cycle for the first six months of the year or all of last summer into last fall, now it's winter maybe in the Northern hemisphere for you, uh, you have a good aerobic pace already. If you're a super experienced runner and you've been doing this for over five years or 10 years and you've done over 50 miles a week, 80K a week, you have a lot of residual base, so to speak, to go back on. And so you could pick up your training usually a lot faster with less risk for injury. You could be jumping up to doing 20 mile long runs, 32K long runs 
within maybe you know two to four weeks. Now the caveat is with our training plans, I said they're 16 weeks a lot of times, sometimes they're only 12 weeks, is that we usually recommend you've been running for two or three or four weeks before you jump into the specific plan because you want some easy mileage, aerobic base uh, before you start doing harder, higher quality workouts or specific long runs because you don't want to do too much or too fast too soon. You don't want to strain yourself. You have to have some baseline level of aerobic base mileage, so to speak. So maybe that's 20 miles a week, 32K a week. You've been running four or five days a week. You've, you're not injury prone. You're not going from total scratch zero, no running at all, right? If you've been going from no running at all, you're not as experienced. Maybe you were injured and you had to take some weeks or months off. Then you're looking at a longer timeline. Then I would say, okay, be patient. You might need 20 weeks to get in shape for this 50K, 24 weeks maybe. So it could be a cycle like that. Um, whereas more experienced athletes, yeah, they jump right into it. Part two of this talk is the specifics of this ultramarathon 50K and how that would change the timeline as well as the specific workouts uh, that differ from just a flatter, more flat road marathon, so to speak. So like I said, it does depend on the type of race you signed up for. A 50K with 3,000 meters of climbing or 10,000 feet of climbing, uh, like the Speedgoat 50K, is a little more extreme coming from a flat road marathon, right? It's high altitude, it could be mountainous, uh, it could be a technical trail, there could be adverse weather conditions, it could be really hot and humid, and all of a sudden uh, this race that looks on paper like it might only be an hour or two hours longer than your road marathon time becomes three hours longer than your road marathon time, and you're not used to going that far, you have to fuel and hydrate a lot differently. Right? You're not used to technical trails, it could really throw you for a loop. You probably want to pad in a couple extra weeks to train specifically for the types of trails and the terrain, as well as especially the elevation gain uh, that you need to develop that musculature. And you know, speaking of my own failures, coming from trying to qualify for um, the Olympic trials again in 2016, especially. You know, I, in 2015, I was coming off of a couple flat road marathons. Then I wanted to do the Comrades Ultra Marathon, still a road race. But then I wanted to do UTMB. Um, so that was that was too rushed. I, I thought I could, you know, get by by getting this fast road marathon fitness and then go to UTMB. That required more time than I thought because of the change in the musculature, the change into getting used to running up and down mountains versus just running flat and fast on a road. So if you don't have that experience and you signed up for this mountainous 50K or ultra marathon, or you signed up for an ultra marathon that's much longer than a road marathon and you're only been used to road marathons, then you should also give yourself more than 16 weeks time. So it really does depend on all those variables, your experience level. Uh, some of it could even be genetic, how well you respond to hills, how injury resistant you are, other lifestyle factors, how much time you have to train, what gear you have, but also the type of course, the type of challenge you're training for. Again, business plug, check out our training plans. We've got different plans for any surface, any distance, any different levels as well. Beginner plans, couch to 5k plans, uh, you name it, beginner half marathon all the way up to beginner and very advanced mountain ultra trail plans. Uh, check that out. Thank you so much for subscribing on here, just watching these videos, giving them a thumbs up if you like them. Really helps out uh, Coach Sandy and myself. Uh, really can't thank you guys enough, as well as the Patreon supporters. Let's keep this Training Talk Tuesday uh, going. Comment below with a Training Talk question and vote up uh, for next week's topic. The top voted question will be the one that will get my attention. And again, yeah, thank you so much for subscribing on here. I'm on social media, at Sage Canada. That's on Twitter, Instagram. Facebook, TikTok, you name it. Uh, shout out to title sponsor, Hoka One One, keeping the dream alive. Thank you so much. Uh, we got Teespring merch in the in below this video as well. Check out our training plans, higherrunning.com. Thank you again. Hope you're doing well and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.